With the way the cursed robe put a target on Silas, his first priority was to build a more permanent shelter. Then he could have a safe place to rest and consider how to remove this powerful curse. But even a sturdy house could not protect Silas from the danger lurking in the desert. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing as Silas the Summoner in death mode, and last episode was our first episode. We got a few items like the Sun Spirit Staff and the Wolfram Controller. In between episodes, I built this base and I'm pretty happy with it. I wanted to make it look a lot more textured and just like a real simple hut. I did a bunch of different types of blocks on the roof like hay, different types of wood, some grass to kind of look like moss or kind of vines growing on the roof. And then I've decorated the house to be a little bit more of like the gold and red themed. I've got the Calamitous hood right there and then the trophy. I think it looks super cool in this bedroom. Um, I've also got just a bunch of steampunk furniture because I liked the gold accents. And then this compass rose right there I think looks pretty sweet. I usually like to put like a vanilla weapon, like the first weapon of the class up in the top, even though we haven't gotten a slime staff yet. I used a different character to bring all these items in and build this. So all of the treasure that I had stored in our original base, I have put into our magic storage. Here it all is. I also put a bewitching table just because I don't want to forget to have space for that because I know I would decorate this whole thing and have to break it later when I get a bewitching table. So for now, I'm not going to use it because that would give us a bonus that we shouldn't have until the dungeon but I wanted to make sure we had it in place for later once when we do get one in the dungeon. I wanted to have kind of like a little crafting area outside and I wanted it to look a little bit different, like a big storage area. So I used different background walls and actuated blocks to kind of make it look like a big pile of boxes and things like that. I love to have an easy way to enter and exit the base. And so this is where we will spawn. And so I can quickly dash right out the balcony and fly around. And then I did this false foundation because I love the way the grass looks under the base and it kind of shows the cool, you know, foundation that this building would have. This is something that I learned from Chaos, one of his tutorials. So now I wanted to go down below and show you where all my NPCs will live. I didn't want to spend too much time on this, so I built just a bunch of rooms. They kind of have the theme of gold and red like my character, and I didn't really decorate them or anything. For now, I just wanted a big grid of just the same rooms. Really quickly, I could build one of these and then use T-Edit to make a whole bunch. And that's the tour of this new base for Silas the Summoner. I hope you enjoy the base. It took me a while to build, but I am very happy with it. I also worked on an arena. You can see right there the platform. I've got it a little bit too high to reach without using a hook, but once when I have a double jump, it'll be perfect. And that's probably where we'll fight like King Slime and probably where we'll fight the Eye of Cthulhu as well. Last episode, we were in the desert quite a bit, getting lots of good stuff from the desert. Ooh, wow, that just vomited sand at us. Okay, so we need to get some more cactus. That'll be amazing. And then I really wanna fight that boss that spawns here in the desert because it can drop some decent stuff just like that mini boss, but then most importantly, we need to fight the Desert Scourge pretty soon because that will give us a lot of upgrades. Man, we are so much more powerful now. And once when we get enough of these Wolfram enemies, we'll be able to craft Wolfram armor, which will be very handy for our first bosses. Okay, so let's jump down here so he doesn't despawn. And let's, ooh, we can kind of land some shots here maybe without him hitting us. No! Stop jumping on me! Oh no! <laughs> okay, this is gonna be harder than I thought. 400 health. I only did 160 damage, pretty much. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is start crafting some Wolfram armor. We'll put the legs, and I think we can do a helmet. Perfect. So before we go to the desert and start tackling those mini bosses and whatnot, we probably need to just do some more exploration underground. We got a camouflaged cloud in a bottle. Oh my goodness. We have one of the Drayden's labs. Let's see, I don't know where the laser turrets are. Or did they remove the laser turrets? So we got some dubious plating and some mysterious circuitry. 
I did some showcase videos about all this stuff when it originally came out, but I think they've updated it since then. I was kind of hoping that Calamity would have gotten rid of the super crazy darkness in death mode, because exploring in the early game gets pretty tricky. I mean, it, it makes it scary, but it's a little bit harder to film because it's just so dark on screen. Oh, I really shouldn't try to fight that guy. Ooh, it does pierce. I saw it shot through all those enemies right there. We're finding a lot of wolf from scraps, so this is good. I think I'm just going to keep farming these up, maybe get another few, maybe like five more, and I think we'll be ready to craft the rest of our armor set. What I'm really hoping for is that the armor set will allow us to summon more than one minion, because I don't think we can summon more than one of these uh, spirit staff ones, but we can probably do a spirit staff and a Wolfram controller. And finally, we got enough to get Wolfram armor, so let's go ahead and put that on and see what we got now. It looks like our defense went up by three, and then we've got the set bonus of plus three defense and plus one max minion. Plus five defense below 50% life. Ooh, this is very good. So now we've got the Sun Spirit and a Wolfram bot. This is awesome. Oh my goodness, this is so much DPS. Finally, yeah, this armor is really gonna make a huge difference. It's probably the most big of a difference you can get from armor early game because all the other classes, when they get Wolfram armor, they don't really double their DPS, but this is just a straight double multiplier. Well, it's probably actually more than double because we get extra damage and stuff. Okay, well, it's time to turn on our mini-map and let's go exploring. See if we can find some of those storm lions because I would love to fight Desert Scourge. Whoa, that was like the fastest ant lion attack ever. Okay, well, we are landing some hits. This Wolfram thing's a little bit better at tracking enemies than I thought it would be. We might be able to beat him. Oh no, we, got, we cannot stand right above him. That's like what always gets me. I keep trying to dash as well. Can't wait to get that Cthulhu dash again. No, 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 no. Do not do this. Oh my gosh, he was down to 62 health. I just could not move. Ah, oh, man. Oh, good. We've got the boss right here. Maybe we can get the boss to come up to the surface. Actually, we're doing great right now. We're doing, like, the best we've ever done. Yes, come to the surface. We've kind of trapped him. Is this going to be, like, <laughs> practically like a no-hit? That's so easy. Oh my gosh, the positioning of that boss is, is everything. Okay, well, we've got the spark. So it says taking damage releases a blast of sparks. Sparks deal extra damage in hard mode. Oh no. Run! <laughs> no! <laughs> There's too many enemies. Well, I can use some rage. Maybe get a little bit of extra damage. There we go, we got him. And it didn't even drop anything. Oh, but I see a storm lion. We gotta get it before it despawns. Oh, there's multiple. Yes! I hear the stinking water attack of another one of those bosses. Oh, if it really interrupts my fighting with these storm lions, I am going to be a little bit frustrated. I spent a little longer than I thought I would trying to get these storm lions. Darn it. Oh my goodness. There's the treasure. Oh my gosh, we found the special Luxor's gift treasure from the desert. So weapons fire unique projectiles based on damage type. Some weapons are unable to receive this bonus. Now we've basically got three minions. Slowly ramping up our DPS. 
And this one's such a smart minion. It reminds me of the Stardust Dragon that just flies through walls and does damage to things. Like, the damage isn't super high, but just passively doing damage to everything around me. Ooh, gold. Five gold. I hope we find the Traveling Merchant soon so we can get that stuff that will protect our gold, like the money collector or whatever. So we've reached the Sunken Sea. This accessory is just aggroing all the mobs down here. And then leaving them. It's like, it doesn't fight the enemies I'm fighting, it just fights the ones it wants to fight. Okay, let's, let's get out of here before it just aggros all of the Sunken Sea enemies. Okay, I think teleport time. Oh my gosh, we we're so close to dying there. Well, at least we transferred our gold before dying there. But we got to go back to the desert and we got to get those storm lions. Oh, I'm hearing that our Luxor's gift effect is doing damage to the boss. This is amazing. This just trivialized the boss because we can do easy damage. Although it just decided to go fight a different thing once when we almost kill the boss. There we go. It's crazy how certain playthroughs I hardly go through the desert at all, but I feel like Calamity does a great job at making the desert a very important place early game. There we go, finally! Oh, and a second one. This is amazing. I think we need one of these per summon for the Desert Scourge. Oh my gosh, I think we just got a summon. Yes! So it's called the Stormjaw Staff, and it summons a baby Storm Lion to fight for us. So let's go ahead and try removing this one, and we can summon the Storm Lion. See how it, it does with its AI. Oh cool, there's two treasures. I think we already got this one. But there's one to our left. Perfect. Getting life. Now we're moving. Flying through this. It's gonna be a lot of desert scourge attempts. Or clears, I should say. Gotta be confident. The desert scourge is usually not that bad, but I really don't know if they've changed AI on things, so the Desert Scourge could be more difficult than before. Oh, interesting. That actually could be really good against a big boss like King Slime. Yeah, that thing's really good once when you get it stacked on something. It's cool to see that we've got all sorts of different summons for different situations. So let's head to the west because we've got crimson over here, so we'll likely find plenty of altars. I was a little scared to go this direction early because we just did not have the DPS with that squirrel staff. Okay, here we go. Into the depths. At least we have some heart crystals up here. Grab two of these. Where are the altars though? Now time to craft. Uh-oh. Did not mean to throw a bomb there. Okay, but we can still craft what we need. So, two desert medallions. There we go. Oh, it's not consumable? Amazing! Are they doing that with a lot of the boss summons in Calamity? That is seriously amazing. Not consumable boss summons? Thank you, Calamity developers. We've got all sorts of buffs now, and mainly the Iron Skin Regeneration and Swiftness. Those are the useful ones. And we are ready to go to fight this boss. Okay, we just need to focus 100% on dodging. And we gotta stay in the desert biome, because if we leave the desert biome, our damage drops off. Oh no, that was close. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we didn't take damage there. Oh, we took damage right there, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of damage. 96 damage. I'm gonna go ahead and pop our first heal. Oh, I forgot to put on our actual good healing potions. Oh no, oh no. It did a 
more aggressive turn than I'm used to. I mean, it really was an easy boss originally, so I'm glad that they seemed to increase the damage and made it a bit more aggressive than what I remember. Go ahead and right-click on it. I don't know if that really does much. Okay, I think we've got this. Oh no, I was focused on activating Rage. Why can't I activate Rage? There we go. I think Rage is just almost ready to go. Okay, so the main thing is not getting hit by the head, as with all worm bosses, because the head does like 90 damage. Oh dear, no! I really want to defeat him. Okay, that was close. Oh, we can do another heal. Honestly, switching to our 100 health heals will help a lot. I really like that attack it does. I, well, I like it and dislike it. Okay, good, we dodged it there. It's interesting, I'm so used to him just lunging at us. Like where he just comes barely out of the sand. There we go. Three seconds. Heal, 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 heal. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. This is not gonna happen. No, my, what? 54 health, I cannot believe it. Oh my gosh, that was so close. Ah, uh, man, that's rough. Take that, nasty worm. And one of those dodges that does not look like I actually made it. I think the hitbox on this boss is slightly smaller than the boss's sprite because I feel like I've gotten kind of hit by the little spikes without actually getting hit by, or without actually taking damage, I should say. Seems like he shoots less projectiles than I remember, but I kind of like that because before it was stand super high in an arena and dodge projectiles. Once again, that looked like I should have gotten hit, but thankfully I did not, because I need all the help I can get on this. Rage is almost active. So is Adrenaline. Ooh, so close. I feel like if I would have Shield of Cthulhu on this boss, I'd be doing a lot better. Oh, Rage was available. I could have maybe doubled up on Rage and Adrenaline. I thought I didn't hear that sound, though. Looked like he was thinking about turning upward. Thankfully, he did not. there. I can get adrenaline. There we go. Amazing. We actually beat him. See what we got. We got some rogue damage. We got an angler kit. Oh, cool. They actually do an angler kit instead of the, the other thing where it would just drop tons of angler gear. And before we forget, we better go to the traveling merchant. And let's see what we can get here. Frost Barrier. Wow. We actually have enough gold for that. Let's get it. I know that's one that's really hard to get sometimes. We have a DPS meter. I think we gotta get that too. 
very helpful. And money collector, oh no. That was what I was coming here for. We were actually able to sell 14 gold worth of stuff and we've got savings of six in our piggy bank. So we can do our money collector. So the frost barrier gives us four defense and it freezes enemies near you when you are struck. You are immune to chilled debuff and it provides heat and cold protection in death mode. That is actually amazing. And then we got, of course, the victory shards and some of the coral, starfish, all that good, good stuff. And we have the ocean crest, which um, makes most ocean enemies become friendly and provides water breathing. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is I'm using the Magic Storage Plus or Magic Storage Extra or whatever. It's the better version of Magic Storage that allows you to quick stack. And now we can craft some Victide bars. So it looks like for the summoner class, the main thing we can do is upgrade to the Victide set, but it doesn't look like there's any summon weapons. Although the Desert Scourge may drop a summon weapon, so I'll, I may farm him up in between episodes or we can fight the Desert Scourge at the beginning of next episode. But I think this is a great place to end. We've defeated the Desert Scourge and we've got so many good upgrades. We've got this cool Luxor's Gift. Now we have the Frost Barrier, which is amazing. Now that allows us to go into the sky with gravitation potions because we have heat and cold protection, which is really good because getting that is actually a little bit tricky at the start. We're getting a little bit more powerful, still struggling a tad, but this is death mode, so it is a bit tricky. I feel like the new Desert Scourge fight was a ton more fun because it was going more aggressively at me instead of just staying close to the ground and mainly moving horizontally. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode, and I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.